Okay, so now, as I said earlier, the number one uh, link response from our email invitations was this Sackler Ace tripod. Turns out everybody likes Sackler, everybody likes the quality of Sackler, but it also turns out people love to save money. And so Sackler has combined those two great things, their brand, low dollar tripods, and has released the Sackler Ace tripod. So come on over here and let's check it out. Number one totally awesome thing about this tripod, it sells for $535. So typically, I mean, you could maybe buy a pan arm, maybe sort of the rubber feet on the bottom of your tripod from Sackler for 535 bucks. Now, a complete tripod. It comes in two models. They are the uh, mid-level spreader version and then the ground-level spreader version, okay? These tripods are not for every camera, though. The maximum weight capacity for the tripod is nine pounds. So we're talking about DSLRs, and you can trick your DSLR out. We've got um, map box, follow focus, uh, uh, base plate. So our, our DSLR rig here is about seven pounds, 7.5. So it's gonna fit under the capacity, under the weight capacity of this camera. You can get an HVX200, an EX1 maybe, but once you start tricking out your bigger cameras, they, they sort of move you out of the range of this camera. This is good for a tricked out, rigged out DSLR camera or sort of a naked um, video camera like an EX1. All right, stay under the nine pound capacity. Why do you wanna stay under the nine count pound capacity? Well, for a lockdown shot where you're straight all the time, doesn't really matter. You can, you can maybe push it over a little bit, but that's not what we use our tripods for. The tripod is more than a static image. It's about getting your camera moves, nice pans and nice tilts. And that's what's very cool about the Sackler Ace tripod. Check out this tripod head. Let's, uh, let's go to Jose here. You see that you've got three steps of vertical drag, pan, uh, tilt drag, one, two, and three. You could also turn the drag off to zero. Maybe you call it four stops. Similarly, you've got three discrete stops of pan drag, one, two, and three. So um, you know when it's set to zero, you can spin the camera around, no problem. If you want to add a little bit of resistance, this is a, you know, a true fluid head here. You're, you're actually tightening up the fluid by increasing the, resisti the resistance, and it makes the camera a little bit harder to, to spin around. Maybe you want to get a smoother, more even pan, and most importantly, at the end of your pan, when you let go, there should be no jump back. There should be no, um, once I'm done on a pan to the left and let go, it shouldn't spin back to the right, okay? That's, that's the importance of a fluid head tripod. Additionally, this is why we're, we're making sure to stay under our weight balance, uh, under the nine pound capacity. You've got six steps of counterbalance here, all right? So counterbalance is slightly different than tilt drag. Tilt drag is going to add resistance so that it's uh, a little bit slower to tilt up or down, but counterbalance, let's, let's unlock the tilt here. Counterbalance, when done right, actually allows you to tilt the camera in any position, let go, and your camera remains exactly in that tilt. Okay, so the first step, you've got to get a nice balance uh, front to back on the camera so that when there is no drag, no counterbalance, and you let go, the tripod stays flat and level. Then you can dial in tilt friction and counterbalance uh, uh, you know, to, to your, your preference, of course. But if what you're looking for is to actively keep the camera exactly at your tilt, even when letting go, then you've got to get a good combination of your tilt drag and your counterbalance. So with our seven and a half pound camera here, I've got my tilt drag at one, I've got my counterbalance at five, that's five out of six, and now I can let it go. So to, to give you an idea of what it's like when you don't have that dialed in exactly, if I were to take my counterbalance out and I, I let go, if I were to let go, you'll, you'll notice that the camera just wants to fall. So if you've got your camera and your rig out of the capacity, if you're 12 pounds, 13 pounds, then you're confounding the internal mechanisms. That's why you've got to stay under the nine pound limit. When you're under the nine pound limit, the Sackler Ace tripod does an incredible job of keeping a nice even counterbalance to the point that you can let go and keep your tilt position. All right, pretty clear? That is the Sackler Ace tripod. Two models, mid-level spreader, ground-level spreader, capacity of nine pounds, also weighs nine pounds. And when you box it up all the way, it'll actually fit in your suitcase. Now, it's not the lightest tripod in its size, certainly. Um, and it's not the cheapest tripod in its size. There are others. But to get the Sackler name, to get that delicious internal mechanism, awesome counterbalance, nine pound capacity, um, there are few like it in its weight class. Uh, and before we move on, I just want to point out this awesome tie down, all right? Sometimes on a Sackler tripod, you get those funny little tie downs that hurt your hands when you try to crank it really hard. This has a nice, giant, ergonomic tie down, easy to you know, undo and redo to get your level bubble exactly right. It's not gonna hurt your fingers because it's nice and big to grip. The only time that won't really help you out is when you're on a slider or a, a hi-hat and you need to sort of get a low angle. Uh, sometimes those, those 75 millimeter bowls are very close to the bottom of the hi-hat 
and, it, and you can't really fit a gigantic tie down in there. Maybe you want to get a spare backup that, that will hurt your hands. All right? So now we're going to turn to Miss Debbie with a question coming in from the internet. Okay, this goes back to when you were talking to Andy. Okay. Uh, Mariano, watching from Buenos Aires, Argentina, does motion graphics, and when working on Apple ProRes, even best quality of Apple ProRes, the high colors look jittery on the border. Is that common? All right, Mariano, thank you for watching the show all the way from Buenos Aires. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your question. So uh, it sounds like Mario is having a little difficulty. Uh, even at ProRes, are you using, can we ask, are you using 444, ProRes 444? I'll let you know. OK, if he, if he comes back in, let us know. Um, so when you're doing really critical graphic stuff, you might not even want to use a compressed uh, codec. You might want to use something like Cineform's uncompressed codec or um, you know, some. Yes, 444. OK, you are using 444. So you're really doing the best you can to, uh, to remove all the jitter from there. Um, Mariano, I don't have the answer to this question, but I'll be happy to take it to Mr. Andy Shipsides, and next month, we'll get you an answer to your question. Thank you very much for tuning in. We're sorry we couldn't get to that one, but um, we will have an answer for you.